Hey art fam, it's Luis Martin, the art engineer, and welcome, welcome to the studio. I'm back. It's been a while. I was in Canada, and I'm still in Canada, really. <laughs> um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you are not a member, go to collagedream.com now and become a member. There are some really exciting things happening, and I want you to be part of it. Of course, if you are not a member, you can still participate and make collages to your heart's content and join us and hashtag ArtFam, tag us, and we want to see everything that you're doing to champion you on. This is the game of collage, low risk, high reward, and, um, and let's get to it. So before I start, I do want to say I got a really beautiful message uh, from one of the art fans, which I'll read at the end of the video. So stick around. And if you have any messages, any feedback, any comments you want to share, I'm always listening and I'm always out there uh, looking out for you. So share. All right. So what am I going to do today? I have some magazines. I thought I would just play. Right? I mean, that's all I want to do really play. So I have a vintage Ice Age Planet Earth book. We'll play with this. I have an old afar and I have wallpaper from 2000, September 2000. My God. So I came to New York when I was 19 in 2000, in uh, January of 2000. A little bit of history there. So let's just dive in and see what we find and, uh, and start collecting stuff, right? All right. How are you? How were the Thanksgiving holidays and all that fun jazz? Mine was okay. Mine was good. I did a live. Um, Canada. I'm still not over Canada. So it was a really great time. Um, here in New York, it's, it's a very different experience when you go out to eat. We go out to eat a lot, um, but we're usually rushed, right? Like, okay, eat, get out because we have more customers. You know, here's your plate. Goodbye. In Canada, you guys. Oh my gosh. Each meal was a two, at least a two hour event. We would sit and they would bring a plate and they would explain what's on the plate and how the chef made it with love. And we would eat it and we would talk about it. And we would like, it was, it was just like, wow. It felt so connected, right? I was connected to the food, to the people I was eating with. We had conversation. We were tasting the chef's, you know, intention and, and his hands and his flavors. It was just, it, that was such a beautiful part of it. Um, so I recommend if you have the opportunity, even if you do it at home, right? Invite people over and just eat for three hours, drinking wine or coffee or whatever. That really made a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, the conversation was amazing. And you know, we went out of our way. We literally drove nine hours, 11 hours to get to Canada. And it felt, it felt like 15 minutes, honestly. So, you know, if you find people that can make the time feel like 15 minutes, you know, you're with the right crowd. I like this image. Um, so yeah, it was incroyable. Okay, so I'm just collecting stuff. Just collecting stuff. Uh, let me know where you're going to now that, you know, things are a little less hectic to travel. Maybe, maybe, um, now's a good time to plan your trip. I know some of our members have been traveling. Oh, I love this guy. This is an illustrator. His name is Jordi Lavanda. He was really popular in the 2000s. He's from Barcelona. Um, very fun, very retro. Check his work out. Um, oh, what a beautiful picture. So... What magazines do you have? I'm trying to declutter. All right, so this is where it's gonna get real, my friends. I'm gonna tell you like a story. <laughs> um, I have a lot of books. Okay, I think that's enough in here. And I thought I'd have a book sale, you know? I, I thought, okay, it's time to get rid of some stuff. So I thought I'll have a book sale and you know, it'll be $20 for a, few, a bundle. And, um, and I was putting those together and then I was like, Hmm, maybe two books for 20. And then Elvis, my dear husband was like, Oh, you know, why don't you put five? Um, and then I snapped and I, I told the story to the members and then I snapped because I was like, oh, you don't understand how, how much I love these books and how 
I go out of my way to, to source them out. And then I was like, oh, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> and it was, it was a moment of shock. And I'm laughing because if you don't laugh, it'll kill you. Um, and I was like, in that moment, I felt empathy for my mother because my mother's also a hoarder. Uh, and I thought, wow, I get it, right? All of these books for me and all of those things for her represent um, unfulfilled promises, uh, dreams that just never came to fruition, you know? For me, like, oh, I want to find the moment to just sit and read. And maybe I just don't have that in me at this point in my life, right? So it was intense, you guys. Um, so I'm a different person now. I, I decided to kind of be okay with it. I'm not going to feel shame about it, but I'm going to be like, okay, I have a moratorium on books. I'm not buying any books until I finish reading the one that I'm reading now. And, um, and what else? So I actually called my mother. So you guys, this is a whole therapy session. So thank you for listening to me. You can fast forward, put it on mute. Um, but listen, I called my mother and I was like, I get you. Look how beautiful this is. Uh, but this is already way too uh, designed, right? This is already something very unique that if I took it out of context, it would be, I don't know, it, it feels a little bit, I don't know, it's too beautiful to touch, you know? I don't want to touch that. It's beautiful. I don't want to touch it. I want to like frame it. Um, so if you, you know, if you find stuff like this, frame it, put it on your wall. Um, but I think it's already such a beautiful thing that it would be so easy to make a nice collage out of it that I think you can do more, right? Or find yourself a black and white image of your parents and and make a collage inspired by this, write on it, put a stamp on it that from the country that you come from or, or something that makes it more meaningful to you. Because this is, I think this is really easy to just dress up, right? You can do more than that. Um, so I called my mother and I was like, okay, like I have a catharsis, like thinking like, oh, she would totally like benefit from my conversation. She's like, I know. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, I told you before, my mother's a little witchy. She's like, yeah, you know, some, some, some guru once told me that he, he saw that I, he could tell that I bought a lot of books. And then he asked me, do you know why you buy so many books? And, uh, and she said, she asked him why, and she tells me, he said, because I was looking for the truth. I was like, what? And that hit me so hard because yes, yes. That's why I have so many books here. That's why I collect books on magic that I never read, books on history that I never read because I am looking for the truth. And let me tell you, this is where it gets all crazy, my friends. I know the truth. I found the truth, my truth. And what's the truth? This is my truth. It doesn't have to be your truth. As I look for my CD template, you know what my truth is? Connection. I think I always felt disconnected because I grew up in a very broken home. And I realized that connection is my truth. What I do, this, this is connection. No matter how far I am from you, from my mother, no matter that I don't know your name, they'll never see you or we'll never meet, we're still connected. Like I feel you through the screen and, and you hear my voice. Um, and that's my truth. So I don't have to buy another book looking for connection because I know that it's there. I don't have to um, feel lonely, even though I know that's a little harder, uh, because the connection is there. So. It's different for everybody, and we're all looking for different things. But because it's my experience, uh, I think it's all about connection, right? But that's just because that's my truth. What's your truth? Do you know your truth? Are you even looking for your truth, right? Some of us are avoiding our truth. So I'm going to use this beautiful cup as um, my template. Um, you know, it gets, it, gets, it gets crazy because uh, the seasons, right? It gets colder here in the States, and if you're sensitive, as I am, uh, you do feel a change in your emotions. You do feel melancholic. I feel quite lonely sometimes. And not because I'm alone. I'm, I'm married. I have a great relationship with my husband. I have friends. But because that's, that's my, that's my go-to feeling, right? That's how I was raised. That's kind of my nature. Um, and the dangerous part of that, if you're not aware, 
of your nature is that sometimes we look for other people to cure us of these emotions, right? We're getting all sorts of serious, my friends. Uh, so bear with. Sometimes, you know, you get you get a boyfriend and, or a girlfriend or whatever, or even a pet, and you're like, okay, this is my cure to my loneliness. But there is no cure, right? It's just who we are. We have to kind of sit with it and be okay with it. And that's huge. That was a huge lesson for me. Um, not attributing this feeling of connection and wholeness to a person, to my lover, to my friends, right? Because then you become clingy and, and that's not connection. So that's my therapy session for today. Um, look how beautiful this is. This even feels a little bit too done as well, but maybe I can switch it up a not enough uh, where I can make something special. Photographer, whoever took this is brilliant. I mean, look at this. This is just so beautiful. So let me see if I can make something special out of this more, not more special, but special in my way. Right. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, if you know yourself, you guys, no one can shake you, you know, so just be aware of that. I'm almost, I'm almost thinking I don't like that blue because it's already so beautiful, but let me see early days, as I like to say. So, Awareness, I guess awareness is key, right? Because, you know, I'm talking about connection. I'm talking about loneliness. And um, everything I do really is a response to that. Collage dream is a response to that, right? Creating a space where there is connection for people who maybe uh, will never meet or, or don't need to meet, don't want to meet, but still want to have that connection, right? So that's my catharsis for this time around uh and then also in coming back from canada you know i had such a great time and then you go back to normal and you're like oh like how sad i want to i want to live that again and we can and we have the great memories and we have you know the photos um i remember going to summer camp so i went to this amazing art camp for a month when i was like 15 or 16 and these people, CISA, C-S-S-S-A, California State Summer School for the Arts, um, they thought of everything, like everything. Like they, they asked us questions and they can tell, oh, this kid's gay, put him in the gay um, roommates so they can you know, bond and, and have community. Um, they had performances every day. I mean, it was beautiful. And at the end, they prepared us for the disconnection of this amazing moment of this amazing community. And, you know, they gave us tools so as not to be depressed, so as not to be isolated. And I thought, oh, they're crazy. What are they talking about? And then I went home and it was like, I'm invisible, right? Like nobody sees me the way they saw me at camp uh, because all the teachers were artists and there was so much to do and so much inspiration. Uh, so what am I saying? If you know these things, you can prepare for these things, right? So now I feel very prepared and I make sure that I have everything that I need to, to feel whole and complete. Well, look at that. Yes, please. I love this. And of course, what did I find while I was chatting away? Wings. Wings. Um, okay, so let me do this. Da, 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 da. So let me know what you think of all that because uh, I don't know. I like talking about this and the thing about it is that you can't always talk about this with everybody because not everybody wants to talk about this, right? Not everybody is prepared. Not everybody operates in the same realm. Like I love meeting people who have absolutely no idea of what I'm talking about because then we don't trauma bond, right? We're not like talking about sadness the whole time we're together. How, you know how they say uh, misery loves company? It's true, but so does joy. So let's look for that. Okay. Look at, oh my God. Okay, so this is kind of weird, but you know what? We can craft our own wings out of this. Yeah. So see, we have one here and we have two here. Oh, see that, they don't even have to look alike, but I'll, I'll make this the same size. So it looks like they're from the same butterfly. 
butterfly. Oh no, I started singing. Okay, this is perfect. Oh, so beautiful. Sorry, okay. This, this might be it, my friends. Okay, so I have this really weird substrate. I don't know why it's so oblong, but bear with. Okay, so I'm gonna put this background over here. This over here. I hope you can see it. I know you can. Um, this one over here. Oh my gosh. I love this so much, you guys. And I love that they're not butterfly wings, they're moth wings. Even better, right? So that's fun. I wonder what he's looking for. Connection. More moths. Okay. I like this wing, but I think we need to make it a little bit more thin so it fits. Yeah, proportionately. Okay, I like it. Um, what else did I cut out? That's beautiful. More wings, but I don't think we need them. This is cool because it's so contrasty, right? Let's work with that. I also like this. I, I always love a strip of pattern. I always look for pattern, you guys. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's an H and M. Oh, look at that. See, it just kind of adds a little interest, right? See what happens. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to get one of my hole punchers and see if something fun happens with this orange. There is this text over here. I'm not a fan of text because it brings the viewer back down to somewhere else. It's not the fantasy that I'm trying to create. So as you know, as you probably know, while I was in Canada, I also met up with art fam Joanne LaFrance. Uh, and that was just amazing. Uh, and I recommend people do that. And sometimes people are like, what? How, how are you going to meet a stranger, right? How are you going to... Something you've never met. And this is the thing. I'm not saying go out there and talk to everybody. Kind of. Um, what I'm saying is, don't look for people, look for light, right? Like, once you do it enough, you recognize people's intentions and you recognize good friends. I always say expect friends, expect good friends. But the only way to do that is to trust your intuition. How do you do that? Like this, art. When you create art, you're relying on your intuition and you're using your intuition to create art that is authentic to you. And that is how you can make better choices in your life right? You do it from your gut. Oh, this doesn't feel good. So I'm not going to do that. This feels great. I'm going to go this way. Um, so it's the same thing with making friendships, it's the same thing with having a job that, that's right for you, right? So think about that. Um, I have a friend who recently uh, was looking for a job and uh, he interviewed for uh, a position that was paying a lot of money. But he said, um, I'd rather take this job, even though it doesn't pay that much, but I know my quality of life is going to be so much better. And I thought, that's amazing. Like, wow, I'm, you know, I, I, that makes perfect sense, but I've never heard anybody, I've never heard of anybody actually doing that. So kudos, right? Like that's the kind of person I want to be. That's the kind of people I want to be around. Um, Okay, so I'm choosing this orange because again, it's kind of nice and, and poppy. Um, I love him so much, I love him so much. So, meeting uh, Joanne LaFrance in Canada was, really did make the, the world feel so small, right? And, and when I told her that, she said, and we are so big. And you know, yeah. Look for people who make you feel big, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm loving this so much. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's um, it's almost winter here in New York, and there is a crazy, uh, there's a lot of wind outside. I live on the 38th floor of a building next to a river. So anytime there is weather, it feels like the end of the world. The, the, the windows pop, and funny enough, the water in the toilet bowl 
shifts a little bit. Not the building per se. I mean, it must be to some extent, but it, I can feel it. Uh, so we can see it in the water bowl, um, which is it's fine. But uh, but then I forget. I'm like, wait, it looks like the end of the world outside. Maybe I shouldn't leave the house. But that's just it's, that's just from up here. Same thing, you know, when you have negative people around you, and they're like, ah, the world is ending. It's not. Just, you know, go do your own thing. Follow your intuition. All right, I think I'm in the home stretch. I love this. I am loving this so much. Gee. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I'm done. Uh, this is my collage, you guys. Why does it work? Um, it works because it's balanced, right? There's, I did this thing of threes again. One, two, three. Uh, there's a central image and the photograph was amazing to begin with and I almost didn't want to use it, but I'm glad I did. I think it's different enough where I'm not just writing on the photographer's uh, coattails, right? Because that's a thing, like I was saying with those images we saw. Um, and I love the blue, I love the orange, and I love this this pattern. The pattern just really kind of creates a rhythm. Uh, and I love this line. Yeah, it's, it, it works, it makes me happy. I follow my intuition, right? Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, as promised, I um, I got a really amazing message uh, from one of the art fam, and I wanted to share it with you uh, because I think it's really important uh, on many levels to, to share experiences that we might be having uh, parallel experiences right so this is uh this is the message dear luis i wanted to reach out to say thank you happenstance led me to finding your videos on youtube and because of that extraordinary accident my creative life has resurfaced i lost both of my parents unexpectedly in the last few years their deaths were sudden and traumatic and while I'd been following my passion as a writer, up until that point, everything that I knew about myself was ripped apart. For more than four years, I was unable to write a sentence, to make a piece of art, to contemplate anything other than being unsure as to why I was still here. It was as if my brain could not, did not remember itself, and thus, I became hidden. Seeing your videos, hearing your voice, listening to your thoughtful and kind advice, I felt an ember. The smallest of sparks began to pulse. A deep sense of the familiar began to surface. The voice was quiet, but each time I sat down to watch you create, I would hear the voice again and again. Thank you for helping me ensure that ember remains. I will always be grateful to you. Isa. That's beautiful. Um, and that, you know, gives me pause, obviously. And I, and I want to sink that in. And I want to thank Isa for, for taking the time to, to write that out. Um, and it's real, right? Real, th real things happen in our lives. And I'm so happy that, that you have found your way to yourself again. And if we can be part of that, if I can be part of that process, I'm blessed for that. Um, I'm speechless, but at the same time, I also want to say, you know, congratulations. And I think after a certain time, we realize that even though people aren't there anymore, they're always there. And every small victory that you have is very much with these people in mind and, and, and center at your heart, right? One thing that I did hear about loss, um, look for them where they are, not where they were. Right? And that goes with anything, right? If you break up with somebody or if you're no longer friends with someone, don't look for them in, in the cafe you used to go to. Look for them where they are now. And if they're not around you, they're here. And they'll always be there if you choose. I said, thank you so, so very much. This fills me with so much purpose and joy. Um, and, and here's another thing that I said, Isa didn't know. Um, when she sent it to me, I reached out because I wanted to make sure I can share this with you. Um, at the very moment she sent this, I was in a very wobbly place. And what I mean by wobbly, I was around people who were a little bit cynical. 
<laughs> about things. And, um, and I was feeling wobbly about my, my mission, my mission to really connect with people, people that I don't necessarily see, but I know are there and give so much. And then this came through and I thought, oh, the divine green light, right. I'm in the right place at the right time, exactly doing what I need to be doing. Again, this comes with intuition. This comes with practice and we offer this to you. I know Isa offers it to you too. So lean in, lean in and, um, and you'll know where you need to be, what you need to do and you'll find the right people. That's all. All right, so this was a lot. This was a beautiful session and thank you for hanging out and the year's coming to a close and what a beautiful moment to just pause and, um, and assess. You don't have to say, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, or I didn't accomplish that, I didn't accomplish that, but assess like, yeah, I feel good. I made a collage this year. I made two collages. I made a bunch of them. I feel good. So I am hoping you feel good wherever you are and um, sending you huge hugs. Again, stay in touch. The connection for me is the truth. Ciao.